Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video. This is Mark. Today we're taking a look at Four Aspect Simulations upcoming Creative Rail East Coast Mainline Modern Revamp. The, the initial phases of this route will feature the revamp section from York to Doncaster, which we're going to be taking a look at in this video. This revamp has been done by Benedict Cooper and it heavily overalls the uh, Creative Rail's East Coast Modern route to make it into a much more playable route for 2020 uh, in terms of graphics and everything and assets used and uh, what not, which we're going to go through in a bit. Obviously means there's a few more requirements which I'll be uh, detailing as we go along. So we're currently sat at Doncaster, we're in platform 4 and we are on board 91029 which we'll be driving to York in this video. So I'm going to pause the game now. So at York this is the scenario that I've currently been working on. Plenty of activity going on at Doncaster. I keep saying York, did I say York then? I, I meant Doncaster, if I did. So you got the works in the background over there. 08665, which was allocated to Donnie Works for a while, I believe. Having a little shunt up and down. Got a 91 here with a DVT and a Mark IV shunting around. They're having a works move. You got a Cleef Ops band 158 in the background. As well as a 56 coming through on a coal train. Also got the Doncaster test train hand back on there if you look. Between the uh, brakes, there's a lot of stock. So in terms of this route, what, what's been done on it, as you can see the overhead wires straight away you can see have been done. This has been completed throughout the route, pretty much um, all of the wiring has changed as far as I'm aware. It uses widely now the West Coast Main Line uh, Trent Valley route wires, uh, along with a number of bits from Liverpool to Manchester, which was the base route for this mod. So there's a number of things that have been done. We're just enjoying this busy period here at, your, at Doncaster, I nearly said it again. And then we'll be off in a couple of minutes time. I'm going to get into our cab now. So yeah, you can see already the AP track is now in place in front of us. Uh, all the signals that you see are no longer the Kuju ones, they're now the UK Pro signals, some of which have been modified specifically to suit certain signals that are actually in the route in real life. We're just waiting for that 158 to clear the uh, road in front of us now, and then we'll get the road. So the bits that have been modified so far is Doncaster to York and the Selby section, so you can go Doncaster to Selby and then the head section across to Hamilton has also been modified. So basically everything in the East Coast Mainline Modern north of Doncaster has been done. In terms of the area, you can see on the right there's no Platform Zero here. So Platform Zero hasn't been done at Doncaster. means the route is set within the period that Benedict and uh, also a lot of other people would like to see, which is pre-2012 sort of time. So it's, it's suitable for the intercity area, the junior area and the east coast area. Something a little bit different to the stuff that's already out there because a lot of the other routes that are out there do feature stuff such as uh, the Shaftone flyover and the Platform Zero area to uh, Doncaster. So we've now got the road, we've got the green signal, we've got an M for the main which we'll be taking as we depart Doncaster. Due off in a couple of minutes, in a few seconds actually, 0904 and we are driving 1 November 01, the 0730 Kings Cross Newcastle and we're driving 91029 as far as York journey of about 20 minutes or so I believe the plan is to actually take this extension further in the future toward, not the extension but the revamp sorry, further south but I know how much hard work Benedict has put into this between Doncaster and York and as such it wouldn't be sensible to keep waiting whilst he does the whole thing to Peterborough. I 
I think it's sensible to get it out there now because there's people that want to play it. So he's still got some bits of work that he's hoping to do and finish off. And I'm going to detail as we go further north the requirements. And I'll also detail uh, some of the other things that he's done with the route because he's done a lot of changes. We're departing Doncaster, crossing straight over onto the Downfast. Now this is actually my second time of recording this video because the first time I did it, I didn't have my mic set high enough and I ended up with just 91 sound, which most people probably say is a good thing to be honest, but a bit hard on trying to read the requirements and all you can hear is the sound of a 91. Now there's a neutral section somewhere just up here, which caught me out yesterday. I believe it's just past the bridge in front of us. So the line to uh, Hatfield and Stainforth and Cleethorpes goes off to the right there. Line to the left is to Leeds, this is Marshgate Junction that we're crossing. So the neutral section is just here. There's a, a Mark Fawcett heading south. So you can see the power's gone off, red lights have come on, tells we're in the neutral zone. Now back on again so we can reapply power. We're now heading away from what is uh, known as All Stop Junction, because pretty much everything ends up getting stopped here. So you can see already that the foliage has been transformed. Not only is a lot more weeds and things been added, the whole colour palette has changed from the Creative Rail bright green and also more 3D DTG trees have been put in. As well as a lot of modifications to the grass and just generally the scenery throughout the entire thing from York to Doncaster. So we're now passing Arxi, I'm going to set the speed set to 125. So this is Arxi, good, uh, good slip that we're passing. Well, it was a beautiful livery, Junior. In terms of frame rate, I'm running at a steady 60-ish. Not really seen any stutter. Very happy why I was running overall. This is my second run up the line. First one I did in the video, obviously, that I uh, caped to because it was so bad. Hopefully, this time the game sound is much quieter to the point we can actually hear what I'm saying. We're now heading up towards Shaftholm Junction. Shaftholm is where the line to Nottingley diverges to the left, you can get from there to Milford and round to Drax. As well as go towards Wakefield and up towards York via Church Fenton. Also coming in from the right you've got John Croft Junction, that's the line from Hatfield and Stainforth, Hull, Cleethorpes, all accessible from the right. Of course this route doesn't feature the Shafton flyover, which hasn't been put in because it was put in after this route is based. So there's now a flyover goes across here, it's actually not used at all really these days because the coal traffic's dried up. But they put a, a flyover just literally where we're going under now. And the reason they put that in was to make it so the coal traffic could get to uh, Immingham much easier. So it could access Drax and make everything a lot quicker. Prior to that there was a really sort of roundabout route that they had to go. That they used to go onto the east coast there at Joan Croft and then go north to Hamilton, turn left 
and go around through Milford Junction to the racks that way. Putting that flyover in meant that they no longer had to go on the East Coast at all, they could go straight over the top. And it saw use for about two years, three years maybe, before it pretty much died off and now I don't think it hardly gets used at all. That proved to be a yeah, pretty big waste of money to be honest. Because they built built a road bridge and everything around that. So you can see Benedict's tried to capture the essence of this route in terms of all the uh, other features that's on it. You know, some people say that it's boring, but I think the countryside itself is it can look really special when done properly. And I think that's why he's achieved with this is he's put so much work into the foliage and one or to actually make it enjoyable to drive through. And so that when you're driving along, you're not just seeing the same thing all the time. It's uh, the little crossings and little scenes going on, dotted around. We are now doing line speed, 125 miles an hour. This is Fennec Crossing that we're just going across. Most of these crossings in real life, 2020, they're now barrier crossings. Previously they were operated by uh, crossing keepers in the wooden gates. And that went on as late as about 2015, 16, I think. There was even a couple of signal boxes along this section. I think it's all now controlled from York or Doncaster. I think it's all controlled from York though. This is Barn Lowgate that we're passing. Another one with the crossing keeper hut on the right. And then we pass Barn Highgate, which still has, in, in this version of the route, a signal box on the left. In real life, this signal box has now been demolished. And we now head on the approach, sort of on a raised embankment, we gear head up towards Templehurst Junction. That's where the line to Selby and Hull diverges off to the right. It is the original East Coast Main Line. So the East Coast Main Line, as we know it today, isn't how it always was. In the past, the East Coast Main Line went straight on at Templehurst. There was no line to the left that we will take. It used to go straight on at Templehurst to Selby and into York via the route from uh, Selby East. On the right there, that's Great Heck, this is Heck Plasma Sidings. And in a moment or two, we'll pass the site where the tragic Heck Great Heck crash took place just here. Where the guy in a Landover went flying off the A1, landed on the tracks, and very tragically, a 91 hit the wreckage and then crashed into a Class 66 going the opposite way. Uh, I believe it resulted in at least, certainly the 66 driver got killed, I think it was Steve Dunn. A few of us got killed, I think, in the crash as well. It was an awful accident. There's now a memorial in place there. The line we just passed over a second ago, that was the line from Nottingham to Drax and through Snaith across towards Ghoul. Heads into Drax Power Station just past where we uh, went under. This is Templehurst Junction, so the line on the right, as I said, goes to Selby. We diverge now left. This is a brand new alignment that we go north of Hamilton. And we will be on a line that was only opened in the early 1980s. It was the, the line through Selby is still open, but then the line from Selby to York, direct, closed in the 1980s. This was because of um, subsidence issues and stuff from the Selby coalfield, I believe. I'm not sure if they were doing some mining around there as well. I think it was sort of linked into Gascoigne Wood and what they did there. It was Selby Coldfield that was related there. Whilst on this section to Hamilton, I will read out the requirements. So the requirements for this East Coast Mainline modern revamp will be Creative Rails East Coast Mainline modern, pretty obvious one. The West Coast Mainline Trent Valley, South London Lines Network, Liverpool to Manchester, Settle and Carlisle, 
East Coast Main Line South, the Weir Valley Railway and the Barnstable Line which is available I believe from DP Simulation. So those are the requirements. We're now adding along up towards Hamilton Junction. Hamilton Junction is where the line from Leeds to Hull goes over the top. It's also where there's a curve round to join that line and there's also a curve from the Leeds to Hull line which comes away from Selby obviously. So trains from Selby to York can still run direct, they have to just come across to Hamilton North Junction and they join on to what we're on now on the East Coast. Alternatively they can carry on through Hamilton to Gascoigne Wood, turn right and go around Sherburn Junction and north towards Church Fenton. For such a rural area there's a real sort of vast amount of railway activity actually takes place around here. Certainly an interesting area. So this is the route that coal traffic would have taken and obviously you can imagine how much that would have snarled the East Coast up. I believe it's a 50 mile an hour turnout for Hamilton for trains going around that curve. Oh, there's a neutral section coming up as well. 70 mile an hour turnout. I think it's 50 miles an hour on the curve itself. So there's a neutral section just here where the engineer's depot is at Hamilton. I've shut the power off. You'll see the red lights come on again in a second. There you go. Straight back on. This is Hamilton North Junction now. And we're now 13 miles from York. So this section of brand new railway opened in the 1980s. It joins uh, Colton Junction. So Colton Junction as we know it today obviously didn't exist pre 1980s. There was no line from Kings Cross came in there. A line from Kings Cross went through Selby as I've said and it used to come in at Chalmers Wind Junction just south of York where there were some big yards at Dring Houses. I'll point that out when we get closer to it. Hopefully you can see the uh, amount of variety that Bendix put into this route. You can see the much nicer colour palette, nice farm detail and stuff going on. Some allotments and stuff down here. Just generally, it's put his it's heart, it's sold a lot of time into this room. All in the, you know, with the aim of making it more drivable for us. And hopefully we do eventually get the uh, full extended version down to Peterborough. And this is right the footbridge that we're about to pass. Quite a nice location to take photos at that. I uh, quite enjoy going there on a summer's afternoon and evening. The other thing I know about it is that there's a lot of dogs there that are always barking. So not far to Colton Junction now, about three miles. Colton of course is where the UK's only 125 mile an hour junction is I believe. It's where we join up with the line from Leeds. This is right the viaduct that we're going over now, quite comically. Um, Benedict said that Creative Rail completely ignored the fact that this existed. So this, if you look in the Creative Rails route, you should find this is just an embankment or something and not actually here at all. When in real life it's quite an important structure that uh, floats over the floodplain. Don't know if it's the River Wharf or something like that I guess. No, I'm not really sure. This is Bolton Percy. We're now leaning into the curve as we head around to Colton Junction.
under the famous bridge where all the photographers uh, generally stand. This is Colton Junction. And we're now on the four track section. If you want to access the slow lines here, this is where you would do it before York. Really only useful if you're wanting to go into Holgate or into platforms 9, 10, 11 at York. Although you can still do that further on, I believe, anyway, for the back platforms. Busy period of traction here, we've got a 66 on a coal train and a version HST. This scenario was set in June 2002, so just before Voyagers took over a lot of the work. And whilst coal traffic was still quite common. We're now heading through Copland Fort. Shut the power off ready for the 100 mile an hour limit as we're approaching Doncaster, York. At Doncaster I was saying York, and at York I'm saying Doncaster, figure that one out. I think Benedict mentioned something interesting about some of these warning bars which are coming into York. They don't actually have um, AWS ramps. I got caught out by this one in the uh, initial point when I was doing the video. I went into this 100 mile an hour, 120. So Benedict simulated the big Tesco on the right hand side there. He's also got the nature reserve on the left as you can see. Get the speed down to 90 miles an hour as we pass the Transpinan 158 heading for Manchester Airport that one of course before the 185's got introduced, I think they got introduced about 2006 so we're now getting a double yellow just bringing the speed down, ready for the 60 limit and this is doing houses, so on the right, just past where I passed there is Challoner's Win, which is where the line from Selby used to join in the original East Coast Main Line. And around here was Dringhouse's Yard, which was a, a big yard. I think it was even a hump yard. So it had a, a hump for shunting. That's the light mark, not the brakes. And we're now passing Holgate Yard, which is where there's a Class 66 stabled. That yard's often used by freight liners to stable their trains. So these signals, I believe, is where Benedict actually redid some of these signals and put the um, theatre boxes and stuff on, because in the original route they didn't actually have the theatre boxes on them as far as I'm aware. That was something that I think he uh, did. We're well, following a rather claggy Virgin HST as we head into York Station. We'll be going into Platform 5. This of course is in the era when Aviva Northern were running, the Aviva Northern Spirit. That was also a farce, a bit like the current Aviva Northern, that we've just lost. So you got one on the right there, I think that's in Newcastle via Eagles Cliff Service, if I remember rightly. As we arrive into York Platform 5.
There will be um, more videos planned of this mod modified route. This is just an initial sort of look for you. But Benedict's done a lot of work on this, as you'll no doubt see. And if you come straight from the original Creative Rails route and play this, you'll see what I mean. Keep an eye on uh, Train Team TV Facebook. Keep an eye on the Four Aspects of Relations Facebook page. Also, the Vulcan Productions Facebook page when they release, we'll be doing some more publicising for it. Uh, the route's getting close to completion, but there's no dates or anything like that because it's all about Benedict when he's got spare time. And also, the will to do it as well. I hope you've enjoyed the video guys, please do consider subscribing and hitting that bell for your notifications when we upload new stuff. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate your time as always, goodbye.